Hi, I'm Abby. I have a lot of records and this is Vinyl Monday. So welcome back to Vinyl Monday or welcome if this is your first episode here. And before we get into this week's pick, I just want to thank you all so much for all of the love I've received on my first two episodes of YouTube Vinyl Monday. I ran this show on Instagram for a long time to sort of find my footing with the formula before I brought it over to YouTube. And I want to thank you all so much for all the love you've given those two videos. And I want to thank you all for... 1,000 subscribers? Where did you all come from? Yeah, so definitely wasn't expecting that. Thank you so much for thinking my videos were interesting enough to subscribe, and I'm gonna keep these weekly videos coming. So last week's Vinyl Monday pick was Kick Out the Jams by MC5, and uh, if you watched that video, you'll know that MC5 is one of my favorite bands, if not my favorite band right now. And for this week, I wanted to take it back to one of my older favorite bands. Uh, I went through a huge phase three slash four years ago where this band that I'm going to be covering this week was pretty much all I listened to. I made it a personality trait. It was a problem. So this week I will be talking about Led Zeppelin 3. Wait, what happened to all the others? Okay, so the reason I'm starting with 3 on YouTube is because I already covered Led Zeppelin 4 and Physical Graffiti in my first 10 episodes of Instagram Vinyl Monday, which I'm going to be redoing those anyway. You're, you're going to see those two albums in the fall. And I did Zeppelin 2 as a part of my 1969 Vinyl Monday miniseries. I'm saving one and Houses of the Holy for season two of Instagram Vinyl Monday. Therefore, we are starting here on YouTube with three. Okay, rambling is over. <laughs> Uh, so a little bit about my copy. This is actually the first original copy that I'm showing you guys from my collection on Vinyl Monday. Um, both my copies of Kick Out the Jams and Their Satanic Majesty's Request were represses, and this is an original. I was given this copy of Zeppelin III as well as an entire record collection for free. I ended up keeping about half of that collection I was given, and that half makes up about a third of what you see behind me. I know it's a lot of math. It's okay. I can't do basic mathematics either. Insert I went to art school joke here. Now we'll get a little more into this as my review goes on. But even though Zeppelin 3 was my first Zeppelin album, I didn't totally get Zeppelin 3 when I first listened to this. All right, time to talk about the album art. Let's take this plastic sleeve off. This cover art was done by Zakron, who was an artist friend of Jimmy Page's. Uh, so Jimmy Page has always been super into art and the art world. I mean, if you see photos of his house, my god, it's like he lives in an art museum. It's incredible. So it doesn't surprise me at all that Jimmy Page would be super into the design element of the Zeppelin records. He had a significant hand in a lot of the Zeppelin album covers. Now, I actually didn't know what this rotating piece on the inside of the front cover was called until I started researching this album. Apparently it's called a forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, a Volvo. I just call it the spinny wheel thing. But when you rotate it, you'll see different images come through these cutouts in the front cover. I think that is just beautiful. And if you remove it from the sleeve, which I'm gonna do because it's not attached here in the center, you'll see just how many images were packed into this thing. This design is just nuts. Opening up the gatefold, we see the collage theme from the front cover continued. There are lots of nods to aviation and things that fly in this collage, like uh, lots of planes, butterflies, I think there's a Zeppelin in there, which is a nice nod to the band's name. And on the back cover, we have a composite photograph of all four of the guys. A quick 
side note that I'm sure B-roll Abby is gonna show you. Oh my god, they did Robert Plant so dirty on this album art. He looks like he's gonna sneeze. And here's a little fun fact for you. This album art, this sleeve, was so complex in design that pre-orders were delayed for two whole months. So the personnel on this record goes as follows. You have Robert Plant on vocals, Jimmy Page on guitar, John Paul Jones playing bass, mandolin, the Hammond organ, and one of my all-time favorite instruments, the Moog synthesizer. And he also did the string arrangements for a track on this album. That'll be a fun callback for returning Vinyl Monday viewers. And Jimmy Page was producing this album with Peter Grant. Uh, for each of Zeppelin's four self-titled records, Jimmy Page had a different production team on each one. This was because he didn't want anybody but Led Zeppelin taking credit for Led Zeppelin's sound. There would be no fifth Beatle situations here. So Zeppelin took no breaks recording one or two. It was a constant cycle of touring and recording gigs, recording repeat, but they were able to take a break during the recording of Zeppelin 3. I already know people in the comments are going to be roasting me for so many of my pronunciations in this video. Please give me a break. And they did a lot of their writing in the country at Bronnerier. Please don't roast me. And this change in scenery inspires a shift in focus. Uh, they start writing more folk-inspired acoustic numbers along with their usual hard rock material. Uh, so there's kind of a misconception that the folksier stuff on Zeppelin 3 comes out of nowhere. Um, see Babe I'm Gonna Leave You off Zeppelin 1 as well as Black Mountain Slide, which was a Yardbirds era leftover. Uh, I like to call that era of Yardbirds simply Jimmy Page has a plan. <laughs> Incidentally enough, Zeppelin 3 was recorded in three main locations. One of these includes the Stonesmobile. What is the Stonesmobile, you may ask? It was the portable recording studio of the Rolling Stones because of fucking course the Rolling Stones have a portable studio. Yeah, people forget that all of these guys in the 60s British rock bands were buddies, or at the very least, they knew each other. And they would collab on a lot of each other's stuff. That is amazing to me, seeing as how often they all stole each other's girlfriends. And the other main location location Zeppelin 3 was recorded at was Headley Grange, which funny enough is another location in the country. Once recording is all said and done, this is the track listing we end up with on the record. We kick things off with Immigrant Song, which slides seamlessly into Friends, which transitions seamlessly into Celebration Day. After that comes Since I've Been Loving You, and Side A is closed out with Out on the Tiles. A uh, fun fact, Out on the Tiles was my first Zeppelin song. Uh, side B kicks off with Gallows Pole, which is a traditional folk song. Then we have Tangerine, and That's the Way, followed by Brawny Iyer Stomp. The album closes out with Hats Off to Roy Harper. This is another one of those reworked blues tunes that we see happening a lot on Zeppelin 1 and 2. And John Paul Jones plays the double bass on this one. Quite a few more songs were intended for this record, but they were instead repurposed as either B-sides or stuff coming out on later releases such as Physical Graffiti. And this is important and relevant to me. Um, Key to the Highway was demoed for this one. What? Oh my god, an alternate universe where a Zeppelin Key to the Highway comes out the same year as an Eric Clapton Key to the Highway? Dude, I think my head would explode. So as I'm sure we all know, the single off this album was Immigrant Song with Hey Hey What Can I Do as the B-side. Uh, the single was released a month after the album's intended October release date. I'm pretty sure this was for the purpose of kind of keeping the hype going while everyone was pissed off about their pre-orders being delayed. And you guys, Zeppelin, believe it or not, was kind of fighting an uphill battle releasing this record, not just because of their album sleeve. Audiences loved Led Zeppelin. People went crazy for Led Zeppelin the moment one was released. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. But some critics, 
<coughs> Lester Bangs disliked the hard rock stuff while other critics didn't really think the acoustic stuff made sense. So you see how this could kind of create an issue? A lot of people thought Zeppelin 3 was a little disjointed. To be honest, critics were slaughtering anything Led Zeppelin put out for the sole reason that it was Zeppelin. At least that's what it feels like to me. Gee, I wonder who that reminds me of. Please don't send the pitchforks after me, I have a lot to live for. And this situation highlighted by Zeppelin 3's release of, you know, Led Zeppelin being trashed just because they were Led Zeppelin, it contributes to Zeppelin 4 and Houses of the Holy in a big way. Namely, that we see the band's name in huge letters on this front cover, and we don't see the band name anywhere on this cover. So, what do I think of this record? Buckle up, babes, I have a lot of thoughts. As I said before, it took me a long time to warm up to this release. And an unfortunate reality of this record's legacy is that it's kind of seen as one of the unloved middle children of the Zeppelin discography. It's the same way Houses of the Holy gets overshadowed by Four and Physical Graffiti. This one gets very much overshadowed by this one and this one. <laughs> um, it is a real bummer that Zeppelin 3 gets overshadowed by two, overshadowed by four. It even gets overshadowed by its own damn single because this one has a lot to offer. If I had to sum this album up in one word, it would be eclectic. This is a really well-crafted track listing. It's disjointed, but not in a bad way. I, in fact, I think it works to its benefit. There's lots of experimentation to varying degrees of success. I'd say it succeeds with Immigrant Song into Friends into Celebration Day. And I'd maybe say a weak point of this experimentation is Hats Off to Roy Harper. I do not like Hats Off to Roy Harper. It's such a weird closer. And this is the album where Robert Plant starts to sing a little more than shout. I love Zeppelin 1 to death. I love this album. This was my first favorite Zeppelin album. But you gotta admit, 20-year-old Robert Plant, some of these notes are getting a little shouty. That doesn't happen here. Uh, he's on fire on this record. And that difference between Zeppelin 1 plant and Zeppelin 3 plant, my god, it is astounding. He really grew so much as a vocalist in two years. Immigrant song is overrated. There, I said it. Conversely, Out on the Tiles is super underrated. I personally think this might be a little out of pocket of me to say, but if Out on the Tiles was released as the single instead of Immigrant Song, I think it would have fared just as well. But the crown jewel of this record, by a long shot, without contest, blows everything else here out of the water, is Since I've Been Loving You. Oh my god. The pacing is perfect. It builds so well. That slight drag in the tempo about 48 seconds in, I can't actually play it for you because I don't want the YouTube gods to smite me. It's, it's sublime. John Bonham is the MVP of this track. Uh, he's playing with restraint here, which is something you can't always say for his playing, but that restraint doesn't mean he's losing any power as a drummer, and he doesn't lose an ounce on Since I've Been Loving You. It's all the venom and hatred of a jilted lover, um, and I'll go as far to say as the live versions of Since I've Been Loving You pale in comparison to the version on this record. I truly believe they got it right the first time. This is a top five Zeppelin song. And I'll say Zeppelin 3 holds a really important place in the band's discography. Without this, we could not and would not have ever 
gotten this. I'm gonna round this one out with my personal favorites as I always do. My favorites off this record are Friends, Celebration Day, of course, Since I've Been Loving You, Tangerine, I kind of dressed with that one today with my bright orange dress, <laughs> and that's the way. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I have some big plans in store for future Vinyl Mondays. I have a Woodstock series that I want to do in August, and I have what is going to be the finale of season one of Instagram Vinyl Monday. I've already started scripting this one, and I've nicknamed it the big one, so you know this is going to be a total deep dive material. I have some new videos on deck as well. I definitely want to do something celebrating 1,000 subscribers. Again, thank you so much for that. I have my first vinyl collection update in the works, as well as at least one unboxing, if not two. And I really want to introduce vintage fashion content to my page somehow, because it's a huge part of you know, all of this, what you see on camera every Monday. I'm still working out exactly how to do that, um, but expect it in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope I'll get to see you next week on Vinyl Monday. Bye!